Hey there, music lovers. Today we're doing the crossover between the two production styles. Ever wondered how to sample like Kanye and create drum patterns like Timbaland? Well, buckle up because today we're about to break it down and mix it all together. First up, Kanye. The man is a master at flipping samples, turning old school tunes into fresh beats. His secret? Dig deep into the crates, find those obscure gems and chop them like a sushi chef. It's all about finding the perfect loop, slicing it just right and layering it to create a sonic masterpiece. Luckily, today you don't need to go to your local vinyl shop to dig into those crates. You can subscribe to tracklib.com. The samples you use will also be cleared. I am not sponsored, at least not just yet. Another free option is samplet.io. The site creators call it crate digging for the internet age. I use it multiple times for my beats, but YouTube itself can be sufficient enough with plenty of soul music to choose from. So I came across this channel called Hard to Find Vinyls and after some digging and listening, I finally picked the very first track on the LP by Tomorrow's People. The track is called From Lovers to Friends. And using Chrome extension called Sample, I recorded a long chunk of this track. So here's the first part of this sample that I wanted to use in my beat. From lovers to friends. Second part of the sample I wanted to use. No such Now I needed to find BPM of this sample. Keep in mind, a lot of this old music from 60s and 70s was recorded live and may not have a precise BPM. Even if you align the start of the sample to the grid, it may get off grid later. So you can make the cuts where necessary and splice them together to uh, kind of keep it somewhat aligned, but a little off grid motion will contribute to a nice swing. So don't really obsess over it too much. One tool I use for BPM and key detection is this standalone alone plugin mixed in key live it's a huge time saver i'm also not sponsored by them either but i do use the plugin like all the time like every beat i make i use it trust me From lovers to friends. No such thing as far with no flame. so you can see for yourself the first segment was detected at 130 bpm and the second one at 132 BPM. It's shifting over time and it's fine. Music played live naturally is inconsistent with the perfect rhythm of a metronome. It's okay and it's your job as a producer to align it closer to the grid. But again, do not obsess too much over it. It's okay to have swing in your tracks. Now that I know the BPM, I can set it in my fill project so that the sample is on grid. Let's set it to 130. Kanye's music spans a wide range of tempos, but he commonly uses BPM ranges typically found in hip hop and R&B music. On average, many of his tracks fall within 80 to 110 BPM. However, he is known to experiment with slower tempos for more introspective tracks and faster tempos for high energy bangers. And I wanted my beat to be somewhat fast, so I settled for 96 BPM. Once Kanye finds the sample, he chops it up into smaller segments, most likely in Ableton or FL. I think at this point, he does not care that much. He likely learned most of the main DAWs. He then manipulates those segments, rearranging them to create new melodies and rhythms. He might slow down a melody to give it a more laid back vibe or speed up a vocal sample to give it a sense of urgency, which is what I did here. It just sounded like one of those chipmunk effects that Kanye uses so much. That's what he was basically known for in the earlier days of his career. C5 would be the original tone of the sample. And like I said, I wanted to go up to scale to check uh, different tones. From, 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 from we'll be back and so I like the sound of this one. So I clicked the note and uh, stretched it over just one bar. Kanye likes to repeat parts of the sample. So I drew these notes. So it repeats the sample three times and completes the phrase from lovers to friends on a third time. Then I went and consolidated this pattern into an actual wave file. But here's a little detail that I noticed and I wanted to fix. The S at the end of the word lovers is silent because the next note is cutting it out. That's why consolidating it came in handy. And I knew that I can just cut it out and insert it twice in the first and the second part. And voila. Voilà. 
as for the second sample, I used it as is. I only needed it for the breakdown section of the beat, a little switch up, if you will. And here's what it sounds like. No such thing. Then I went and started looking for other sounds to add to the sample just to kind of complement it nicely with a different melody. And I was going through some one shots that I had and I came across this Prophet bass one shot. I assume it, it, it was sampled from an actual Prophet synthesizer. I like this deep rumbly bass, but I didn't use it as a bass. Here's the thing. I was playing with my computer keyboard. I wasn't even using my MIDI. The key that I pressed was in a higher register and I made the melody just in like 10 seconds. Bottom line, don't get stuck on things. I just thought it sounded cool. I guess it's a lead and it was complementing this sample uh, really good. <laughs> As for mixing, the sample only has parametric EQ2. I removed the low end up to about 100 hertz and I tamed the high end a little bit as well. And the second plugin on it here is OTT multiband top down compressor. And here's a little tip I picked from Aiden Kenway, the remake God. Shout out to Aiden. I brought the L knob down, which is essentially removing the low end, giving shine to the mid and high frequencies. What it does is it eliminates the mud and the rumble and just kind of gives that precious space to the bass elements that you will be adding to your beat later. Here's before effect. After the effects were added. Sounds so much better. It's more clear. There's less mud. Do that. Remember that. Aiden, you rock. Hey friend, come here for a sec. A little bit closer. That's better. Make sure that you find that subscribe button and give it a click. I'll wait. Go ahead. Take your time. You done? Nice. Thank you. I appreciate you. Well, let's keep it moving, shall we? Drums. And as promised, drums we're going to be doing in the style of Timbaland. Well, kind of. First things first, what I did, I went into my collection of Ultimate Breaks by Young Guru. It's basically a bunch of drum breaks that I often use in my beats. Super, super dope. I'm pretty sure you can go and Google and find where to download them. Probably somewhere on Reddit, but these are dope. I picked this one together with a sample. Already sounds dope, right? But does Timbaland stop there? No, he doesn't. He layers drums, oftentimes very extensively. And if he doesn't, we for sure will. We'll make it nice and fat and groovy. Let's go. So here's another perk loop that I probably found on Splice. It kind of gives me a bit of a Timbaland vibe, just the way it sounds already. So here's all together. Timba doesn't stop there either. He keeps going. Moreover, he keeps bouncing. He bounces off the walls. He bounces off the ceilings, off the floors. The bounce never stops. The bounce is eternal. So I went back digging into my library, making sure that I get as close to the eternal bounce as possible. I literally found a hard timbo kick. Hmm, nice. Uh, another kick by the same producer. It's called VHS kick and it looks like I layered them. It has a bit of a tail, some texture, VHS effect, you know, 2005. VHS snare, timber rim, wet clap. This would be the backbone of this groove. So let's hear only the kicks and snare, rim and clap playing all together. By the way,
way, if you didn't know yet, I have a video fully dedicated to Timbaland production style where I make Timbaland style beat, super groovy, super bouncy with Bollywood East Indian sample. Sounds really dope. Go check it out. I'm going to leave the link right there. Also, whether you are a beginner producer or a seasoned pro, you may want to use loops in your beats at some point. Everybody does it. I surely did it. What I'm trying to say is that I have a free sample pack of high quality loops. All of them are stemmed out. You can flip them up. You can use them as is. Just add drums or whatever. The link is right here. Go cop them. I'm here to help you on your journey. Enjoy music creation. If you look at this grid, I'm filling out the gaps between the kick that is layered and the snare and the clap that are layered. Fill out those gaps, see what makes sense rhythmically. Also use this swing knob. I usually use it up to like 23%, sometimes more, sometimes 30%. So here's the clap. Pretty standard dry clap from 2000s. Back then there wasn't a lot of hard hitting drums. That's the reason why Timbaland went crazy on layering and making sure his drums bang. And they actually do. Up until this day we we'll love his songs because those grooves are undeniably hard. Here's that reverse noise perk. I had some weird sounds. The more interesting unorthodox sounds you find, the better. It's just gonna make you stand out that much more. Another perk sound. Bell perk. That's pretty typical for 2000s music era. Shaker. And that's just a fill each two steps pattern. All of these drums together. Now let's hear these drums together with the other drum breaks that I showed you previously. And the last thing is last, bass. I often use key bass plugin, free plugin by the way, in these style beats because the bass is just sounding good. I have nothing else to say. It just follows this melody root notes. Here's the bass pattern. two thousands is the era that I'm trying to align with. Back then the bases were quite simple. There was no push for crazy 808s aside from Kanye, right? Kanye was the one who brought 808s into the mainstream and now it's basically the staple in hip hop trap beat making. But back then the bass wasn't really the center element of the beat making and it was uh, quite generic to be honest. And that's why I picked it. Let's hear it together with the drums. Now together with the lead and my own drums that I programmed. Obviously this beat still needs some mixing and arranging. I'm gonna get to that. I hope you learned something at least even if it's one tiny little thing or if you haven't learned anything I hope you at least was entertained and if you have any suggestions for the future videos please drop them in the comments and remember subscribe, like, God bless your soul. Peace out.